is now. Good. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to carry on because I think we're live. We're being told by our producer that we're not. I'm pretty sure we are. So hopefully you're with us and we're going to be all good. And now we're going to make a tornado potato. So this is what we are looking for. Very nice. That looks really, really tasty. Yeah, so that is the kind of vibe we are looking for. Look at that. You can see that the potato is kind of like crispy on the inside. Absolutely beautiful. And we are going to be making them. Those are the ones that were deep fried. Hello YouTube, we are now live. These ones have been unbaked, so not quite as crispy. And these little beauties were air fried. We're going to do all of that for you right now. Very good. So what's the first process then, bro? Wow. You see, the funny thing about these potatoes is that we got a load of comments saying people couldn't make them. It was too hard to make our tornado potatoes. So that's how we thought we'd do this. We wanted to like show everybody just how to do this. So here we go. We have a skewer. This is like a wooden skewer. You are going to be better off with a wooden skewer. Mm -hmm. And the Hubble potato. There we are. And I'm going to give you a top down camera here so you can see oh, what's nice. going on. Oh, Thanks, bro. look at that. That's good. And now we'll go so this can be a little bit just, you just have to persuade this bad boy to go in right there. You can see it getting that through. Bro. Yeah. That is a good start. That looks really cool. Now, we have the humble knife. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it doesn't really matter what knife you use, but you do want a sharp blade, and you want one that's kind of convincingly big enough to get around here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just circle all the way around that potato in a kind of spirally tornado fashion, being really careful not to cut over so, yeah, we, were, we, we made a bit of this earlier on, and we were thinking, if you had a kind of soft-bladed filleting knife, then it might actually be really good, because you get a little bit more dexterity in, in the actual blade itself. Absolutely. What you can see, I don't know if you can see this on the top cam. Oh, um, top cam? Yeah, give us a bit of top cam. There's my head. Look. Um, but actually, I'm being really careful with this blade, not to cut the whole thing. I'm only cutting, like, half closest to me. And I'm angling that blade kind of both in and down constantly. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to cut <laughs> a slice of potato. You just want to follow this round in a kind of spiral. Yeah. Um, it is a bit tricky, but it's just worth it. I mean, uh, we, we didn't nail everyone, did we, earlier on? There was one error, wasn't there? The one, that, one that broke. But I mean, from the comments on Facebook, a lot of people have had errors with this recipe and uh, ruined many potatoes. Yeah, if you are cooking this recipe and it goes well, we want to know about it. So send us a picture on Instagram. And if it even doesn't go well, we want to know about that as well, so we can try and improve the process for next time. So it's at bosch.tv for Instagram. So the inspiration for this recipe, you know, it came from a Hasselback potato. Obviously, Hasselback is a way of making a potato that's a little bit easier, maybe a little bit less fiddly than this. Maybe we'll show you if we've got a little bit of time. In that, you're going to use two wooden spoons. And we just thought, how can we make that a little bit more boshy? Now, uh, producer Cat has just come into my ear and said, say hello to everybody who is on YouTube, because apparently we had technical issues right at the beginning. So just to inform you, Henry is currently cutting the potato, and we are making a piri piri tornado potato. One of these recipes that went super viral on Facebook very recently. He's cutting the potato now, it's looking super good, right? It certainly is, but I'm just keeping on my oil. So we've got some oil there as well, which is getting up to 180 degrees. Uh, it's gonna let us fry later on. But first off, we're gonna get one in the oven and one in our air fryer. That looks very, very good indeed. There we go. That is successful first cut of a tornado potato. I'm happy with this. Now this, this moment here, when you kind of pull it apart from itself, is another moment when you can break off the little bits because they're kind of just attached by a spiral of thread. So what's going on there? You're just sort of like pulling the uh, the little pieces that you just chopped apart so they cook easier on the inside, right? That's exactly right. Look at that, look at that in the in the hammer. That is so cool. It also looks pretty like this. I want I want gaps in between these little slices of potato. So basically opening up the potato. Um, so like when we are using 
uh, a knife. You need it to be really, really sharp. We go with the German brand called Wusthof, which is a very, very nice knife, right? That's true. Okay, so there we go. That is a tornado potato. Let's have a little close up on that bad boy. Boom. There we go. Look at that. We're going to go there. Ah, oh, you beauty. So that is going to go into our oven. Yeah. I'm going to pop that in this baking tray. There we go. Pop that into the oven behind you. Sure thing. There it goes. It's in the oven now. Um, hopefully, your oven was preheated to 200 degrees Celsius. That is going to take about 25 minutes or so to roast, just about the time when we should be finishing this video. Let's get a touch more oil again and just cool this down a bit. So it's got a little bit hot. Tip now, if you do leave your oil heating a bit too much and it goes over the temperature, you can, of course, just add some more cool oil, which we're going to do. We want to get our oil up to about 180 degrees, which is perfect for frying. Meanwhile, I'm going to get on another potato. Go in there with this bad boy. So producer Kat had just asked us um, if we could boil the potatoes before cooking them. And do you know what? We haven't done that, so we wouldn't want to say either way. But one thing we would say is the way that we're using, uh, the way that we're doing this, it works really, really well. So don't boil beforehand. Just go straight in for either a bake, an air fry, or a fry. How's that going, bro? Yeah, round two. Yeah. Tricky. It's it through, tricky. really got a convincingly Tell it that you want it to go onto that skewer. Tea towel can help, actually. Mm. So there's one right there. So, yeah. I'm going in again. Remember, we're going in at a little angle there. Yeah. I think you can see that. Yeah. Little angle, and then just curving that plate down, following it round, and creating a spiral. Yeah, and definitely with this slow and steady wins the race. You wouldn't want to go too quick, because there's every chance that you might, well, nick your fingers, and we don't need that. Well, I'm feeling a little bit, um, I'm feeling kind of bold with that. Yeah. We, we've done a few of these already today, so I'm going to see just how quickly I'm going to go. Yeah, it's looking good. It's very, uh, that, is, that is a good technique. There's something quite hypnotic about that. <laughs> one, that oh, but then every now and again, you lose the angle and you've just got to twist it down that little bit more and remind it to stay down. And it, guys, if you can see Henry here in that angle of uh battery is low on my camera hello um yeah so i'm gonna put it back to okay just check this oh there, there we go sorry. <laughs> sorry about that guys that we had a little um error message on the big screen up there but don't worry we're cracking up um it's looking good that one thank you very much are we all good with the battery uh it's looking okay for battery it just said uh, a big black screen came across and said battery low oh, no, like, oh, that's no, no, good. Uh, but in actual fact it's working fine um, so, as we were saying before, be careful with your fingers, you don't want to nick them. Oh, this is good. Yeah, we're getting there. So, out of all the potatoes that you have ever made before, would you say that this is one of your favourites? <laughs> this is definitely one of my favourite yeah. potato recipes, yeah. It's kind of tricky, and it does take a little bit of practice, mm -hmm. so you are probably going to ruin a few potatoes as you practice. But then you, it takes seconds to turn yeah. what is, let's be honest, it's quite a boring vegetable into something that's quirky and a bit of a showstopper. Yeah. Potatoes. I mean, if you like potatoes, let us know which kind of potatoes you like the best down below. Do you like sweet potatoes? Do you like new potatoes? Do you like nice pie potatoes? And how do you like them cooked? Do you prefer mashed, tornadoed? Do you like them fried? Do you like them boiled? Which way? Anyway, let us know. And I guess another thing that's worth mentioning at this point is, hello, again, I'm Henry. You may have just joined us. This is Ian. We're Bosch. Um, we, we are live again, this is day two. We're going to be going live all the way throughout quarantine. Because there's four of us live in this house together. We hang out, we cook for each other. And since we're in quarantine, we thought we might as well just broadcast it for all of you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mum. <laughs> Catch has told me that you're in the comments. So, yeah, uh, behave yourself, please, if you'd be so kind, that'd be lovely. Here we have another one. Look at that. How are we feeling about this bad boy? Uh, that might be the best one that we've done thus far. Oh, beauty. And that was a speedy one. And that was a really good one. Yeah, that, that was really fantastic. I kind of need a big clean one. Uh, we have that back in here on the right hand side. There we go. So, yes. in order to fit this bad boy into our air fryer, I'm just going to trim off the skewer. Yep. Like so. And like so. Cool. That is now going to fit perfectly in. The air, fryer. Our air fryer. 
So here is the air flight, if you've never seen it before. It's um, it's a funny looking contraption. <laughs> we'll bring it. Uh, I can hold it, yeah. There we, there go. we go. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, um, you can fry, but you can also roast in there, and it either uses a little bit of oil, or no oil at all, and just air to cook the things. It's a very, very cool thing, actually. And then this is going in for how long? I'm going to give that about 15, 20 minutes or so. 15, 20 minutes, right. And so we've got one in the oven, we've got one in our air fryer, we have our oil which is around 180. So I've got one more to do, quick time. Very good. And um, so like the oil one is basically the naughtiest one by a country mile. But as we were saying before, I reckon that this is probably the tastiest one because it basically what you make it is a big curly potato chip. And uh, who doesn't like chips or fries if you're in the United States? Exactly. I mean, it's chippy tea. Yeah. So um, MJ, my fiance, likes to talk about chippy tea. And, uh, and that's what this is. Yeah. Chips for tea. It's it a really northern thing, isn't it? It is very northern. Um, if, for instance, you didn't want to um, tornado your potato, there is another technique you can use, and it's called hasselback. Now, the hasselback potato we put in our first cookbook, Bosch, um, is a very easy technique where you take two wooden spoons, place them on your board, and you chop the potato almost all the way down, but not quite, that's what the wooden spoons are there for. And uh, it's still a really cool way of making the potatoes, but um, it's just a different way for you to do it. How's that going, bro? Good, man. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah, I've been extra careful. So remember, we're kind of going around it in a spiral motion, slanting that blade downwards, and just resting the tip of the blade on the skewer as a guide. And could you tell the people uh, what temperature our oven is at again? Our oven is on 200, um, but really you're just going to want to get it quite hot and then it blitz away. And then our oil is at 180. If you, obviously, if you haven't got a temperature, you can just dip in the end of like a wooden spoon or something and see if you get some little bubbles. That's actually telling me we're a bit cool. Oh okay. yeah. So they like a bit more heat under there, but not too much. Yeah, and if you are um, frying, then please do your best to um, to be as safe as possible. As you can see in our pan just now, we have a thermometer, and we're going to hit 180 degrees. And if your oil goes over 180 degrees, just add a little bit more oil in to cool it down. And once you've finished using your oil, let it cool down to room temperature and then pour it back into um, the bottling in which it came. Don't pour it down the sink because that adds to the massive fat burn. Okay? <laughs> we don't want that. Ian, what's a fat burn? <laughs> a fat burn. Um, a fat burn is that big lump of lard type stuff that lives in the sewer because people carry on throwing chip fat and various other goodness knows what <laughs> down the loo or down their uh, sink. So yeah, please don't do that. There's no perfect solution though, is there? Because if you put it in the bin, then you're kind of like just chucking it into landfill and something plastic. Not the best, is it? Right, there we go. I'm pretty happy with this one too. And let's have a look at that. So, so, as you can see, everybody there, Henry is using a skewer. And for this recipe, um, a skewer is definitely something that you need. But if you don't have skewers and you do wish to, uh, to make something that's really nice, um, that screen has gone black, all the screens have gone black. Um, yeah, you can make chips or you can make a Hasselback potato. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about um, Hasselbacking. Is there a Why is it gone black? I don't know. Uh, Cat, can you see it? has gone black. Give us one second. Yeah. You can still see it. That's cool. So, sorry, but uh, Henry, you can see this in there. see that now. Hey guys, yeah, sorry. We um, so basically uh, we have a screen uh, uh, attached above the camera, and unfortunately it's just gone black, so it means I can't see what's going on. However, don't worry because we do have a laptop just over there, so I'm going to use that as the screen that we need. So give me one second. Sorry to leave you all hanging there. This is definitely live. Um, Yes, so cool. Now I can see what's going on in this little laptop here. So uh, disaster averted. And if you are wanting, okay, and if you're wanting to um, to ask us some questions, we will be hosting a Q and A session in the notches of the future. Mr. Firth is back in the building. Hello, sorry about that, guys. I have absolutely no idea why uh, that little screen just went black on us. This is rough and ready. We are doing this in our own house, 
and uh, it's not easy. So thank you for bearing with us. Yes. Now, my potato is looking great. So I'm just going to, again, just chop off the end of that skewer so it will fit nicely in my pan. My pan is at a good temperature. It's about 170, 180. It should be good. Well, that is a bit. That is a good size knife you got there. Mate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Should we show that camera what's going on here? Look at that. Oh my busy days. That is the be that might be the best one that we've cut so far. I really like that. Thank you very Look much. Look at that. It is cool. And um, how, how's the um, how, how's how's the oil going? Well? The oil is perfect. So I'm going to just gently drop that into our oil. You won't be able to see it unless you're looking at the top cam. One thing that's really important when you're using oil is just to kind of lay it away from you. Yeah. So if it does splash, it doesn't splash in your face, it goes away. So, right, so now that is pretty ferocious. It's quite hot, um, and like I said before, you definitely need to be very, very careful when you're deep frying things. This is gonna deep fry for around about five minutes. What is next? What is next? So, next up, I feel like we found our footing now. We yes. had our little moment. <laughs> Maybe every time we stream, there's gonna yeah. be a moment when something goes wrong. That was it. Now. Um, so now we're going to make a piri piri rub, which we're going to put all over the top of this fat boys. So into a bowl or a jug, we've got some oregano, some ginger powder, some onion powder, we've got some smoked paprika, it's going to add that fireiness. Just think of all those flavours that are going in there. We've got some cayenne pepper, peppery and hot. We've got some ginger powder also, that's going in. And we've got some salt. So how much of this salt are we going for here? So with that salt, we've got uh, two tablespoons, and it's well blitzed sea salt. And it it all in. Yeah, yeah, pop it all in. Yeah, pop it all okay. in. So this is this is basically a slightly freestyle recipe, which is going to give us a, a very very salt. Oh, it's right. Now. Yep. A very very salt, which you can use and reuse as you see fit. That looks so good. Now, notice how uh, Henry's doing that in a jug, and the reason why he's doing it in a jug is because you don't need all of the seasoning straight away. What we're going to do is pour that into a suitable container and use what we need now, so you've got some more later on. Amazing! Right? Genius! Absolute mm. genius! I'm going to check on our little bad boy over here. For this, a slotted spoon is going to be perfect. Ian said it already, but just be proper careful in the kitchen. Like, it's really easy to burn yourself with pot oil. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that is looking good, but I think we could probably do with a couple of Show it to you. Yeah. So you can see on that camera. Nice, nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so there we go. So we're not there yet, as you can see, but it is starting to colour. So let's pop that bad boy back in there. It's very, very good. Yeah, so a touch uh, more heat. So we've got that going. Should we get some questions in now? Yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, any questions you would like to feed our way? Cool, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So guys, if you've got any questions for us, now is a wonderful time to ask them, so do drop them below in the comments on either Facebook or YouTube, we're streaming on both. We've got producer Kathy in Ian's ear, which is really cool, so she can like relay your questions to us. And um, the first question, which has come up a lot, is do we live together or are we self-isolating? And yes, we are. We have four housemates, none of us have been out in about three weeks. Another question that's just been asked is if that is water in that pan. It's not. It is oil. We are using sunflower oil and we are uh, frying that potato at 180 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so that's hot. So if you are going to make this with oil, be careful. But we are also showing you just how you can make it in an air fryer and an oven as well. Air fryer is going to be about 20 minutes. Oven, 25 minutes to 30 minutes. And if you're frying it, going to be less healthy and it will only take about four or five minutes until it's golden brown. We've just had another question that is nothing to do with those recipes, but it's still a good question anyway. Um, can you make melted cheese without cashews? Now we made uh, a melty-ish cheese with almonds in there, didn't we? We did indeed. So I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. probably yes. Maybe you can use it with silk and tofu as well. I'm just going to get some shines. Yeah. One thing that you'll definitely need though, if you are going to be making cheese, um, is going to some like interesting powders. Now there's a lot out there. Uh, we we have, but which ones have we used? We used tapioca starch for that kind of gumminess. Uh, we've got some citric acid as well for the sort of like uh, the, the, the cheesy taste. The bunch of stuff. Yeah, but well, we use agar, agar, agar to kind of um, help gel the cheese together and turn it into basically a vegan feta. That's cool. 
Um, and okay, so just in case any of you guys missed what was in the seasoning mix, we've made a piri piri mix. Harry, can you remember? I can remember, yeah. So in our piri piri mix, we had some sea salt. You don't need to have the salt if you don't want it, but obviously it makes sense. We had oregano, garlic powder, ginger powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, and that was it. Well done, well done. Well done. And uh, the full list of the ingredients is on our website, bosch.tv. Just go to bosch.tv in the search bar at the top, type in live, and it will pop up there. You'll find it. Now, of course, you might not have these ingredients. And if you don't have these ingredients, that is absolutely fine. You can freestyle this a little bit. Um, I would just say for the spice mix, just play with whatever you've got in your cupboards. You don't need to use chives. I'm going to pop some chives on the top because I love that kind of freshness. Yeah. And I also just want that green pop of colour that's going to stand out against the red. You could use some spring onions if you wanted to. But it's good, you absolutely could. How, how's that bring along? I mean, that's looking pretty good to me. Oh, I check that's the good. inside. Check the inside. I think we are good. Oh, yeah, right, so there you are. So look at how golden, how brown, how caramelly coloured that is. It's like a Wicked, amazing chip. Absolutely naughty, super crispy. I'm going to be really careful and just pop that on a piece of kitchen paper to cool down. Yeah. So, and we'll Ooh. just let that sit for a little bit then, right? Yeah, we'll just leave that there for a couple of minutes just to it's a little bit less angry. And we're going to hit it with our salt, hit it with our chives. I wonder how we're doing over here. How are we doing over here? Um, so, if you guys remember, we were using an air fryer, we were using an oven, we were using. Um, like deep frying as well. Is there any other ways that we could have cooked these uh, potatoes? Like we could have just like got a dragon and let him yeah. go. <laughs> I, I remember we went to, uh, do you remember, we went to Doug McMaster's restaurant called Cider, and he had a technique for cooking potatoes where he buried them in the ground mm. for a month. I'm not sure I really understand that, but it was a technique. If you've kind of heard of um, Silo or Doug McMaster, go check him out on Instagram. He is at McMaster Chef, and he is a genius, one of the best chefs in the world in our Absolutely. Now I'm just checking on how this little beauty is done, and that is a masterpiece. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it looks good. I tell you what, before you dress it on there, yeah, I've got a little plating. Uh, oh yeah, yeah man. what you got? Oh, uh, just a little one, just to make it. If you have just joined, uh, this is Bosch Live. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to be here every day, every weekday. Oh, look at that. So I'll just give you the top cam so you can see what's going on. Look at that, eh? Yeah. We're going to be here every weekday cooking for you and just generally hanging out. Um, we've got a potato theme this week, and every single recipe is potato related. Yes, so yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's for you. Cheers. Now we're going to take this lovely peri peri salt. It could be peri peri or peri peri. Uh, I'll spin that round. Yeah, there we go. A bit nicer. What shall I clean that up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Just got to make it look nice. So you might as well right. see that clean coming along because it looks pretty cool on the top. It's all nice and busy. Uh, and just so you guys know, we've turned off the oil. If you finish cooking your peri peri tornado potato, we strongly recommend that you turn your oil off right now as well. Right, so look at that. Look, look at it. Oh my god. Right, so which camera is good for this? Here we are. So this is our peri peri seasoning and it's getting dusty all over the top by Mr. Firth. It's looking good. You don't want to overdo it, just a little tap, tap, yeah. tap, make sure it gets into those crevices. Nice. In the gaps. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. And then to finish it off, do you know what? Let's go a little bit more. A little just, bit more. Just a touch more. Don't want to be stingy. Very, very serious. Get yeah. a bit on the plate as well, just to tell the story of what we're doing here. Yeah. This naughty little fiery potato, red and angry, pulled down. We've got that. Like a bit of freshness from these finely chopped chives. That does look very good. That is basically the poshest chip anyone has ever eaten yeah. um, and anyone could hope for. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's good to make um, one ingredient sick and like give it the stage and just let it do its thing. And today, that's what Henry has done with this one taster. I mean, it's quarantine, so yeah. I don't know what you are doing, but um, we're just hanging out. Yeah. You can go to the supermarket, there's barely any ingredients, the flour's gone, the pasta's gone, but there are potatoes in droves. That's why we need a potato week. Potato week. Also, I think we did post the, uh, the roundup of potatoes. Yeah. We posted a compilation of our favorite potato recipes, and that's been really popular on Facebook, so 
Everyone's loving the potatoes right now. Yeah, that's good. Should we have a little taste and see what it's like? a little taste. Yeah. Right, I'm going to come over and have a little taste of the potatoes as well. So I mean, open. Open. that's not oh, bad, is it? Wow. I mean, wow. Here we go. This is like party food. It's really fun. There we go. Grab a little chip. I'm just going to go in there. And I've got the, um, the don't worry, it's, it's vegan dressing, obviously. Absolutely delicious. That, that that salt, right? The um, the, the, wow. the very very seasoning is so good. Wow, that's really really nice. So that's like, I mean, you've got fire going on. You've got such a contrast of little spices in that salt. The potato crispy on the outside, super hot, steaming, mm -hmm. and just that little bit fluffy on the inside. It's perfect. And obviously, um, we're just we. Really uh, this is the naughty one, and as we said before, we're making three. <laughs> so we're doing air frying, baking, frying. The frying is obviously delicious, but the other two will be amazing too. I think the frying is maybe the uh, the best one. Yeah, which is we haven't actually fried them before. Normally we would bake this, but we just thought let's go a little bit naughty for Boss Live today. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll check on our air fryer over here. Yeah. Also, guys, now. Um, because we're going to be wrapping this up in the next sort of like five minutes or so. If you have any questions, now is the perfect time to ask them. But in the meantime, let's show you our really, really, really beautiful end product. Yep. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. I'll show you from the top cam. Oh, look at that. Hey, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's naughty, isn't it? That is very cool indeed. So we've got the tomato potato, the peri peri salt, the chives on there, we've got that freshness. I mean, this is a perfect cheap dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a little bit of salad and greens on the side, as we're all going to do. Yeah. Maybe we should, while we wait for our air fryer, get Bodyweight D, our housemate, over and see what he thinks. Darren, do you want to come and uh, show us um, this potato? So uh, we live with Darren, he's on Instagram at Bodyweight D, right? Correct. Correct. He's not here somewhere to say <laughs> chips, you and did. spices. Oh, man, you all that good stuff. Yeah, man. Oh, I hope you're in the mood for potatoes. Yeah, because we've got enough of it. <laughs> 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 so, my, my diet is very calm, heavy, so this is, uh, this is perfect for me. Excellent. Um, uh, just read it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, is this uh, salt that we've got here? Oh, that's just a, just a little peri peri um, dip. And that Pretty is our oh, peri peri tornado potato. Super easy, super simple. But okay. mm. So, um, some of you are asking about the air fryer. Now, we um, we put them in for 15 minutes, 108 what do you reckon? And if you've got a little potato, uh, it will be cooked perfectly. So, marks out of 10, Dan. Tell us what you're thinking. What are you tasting? Right. So, we please some home. Oh, I did my score yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I went 8.5. Today, I'm going to go with. Solid nine. Oh, oh, solid nine. Solid. Not just yeah, nine. Solid, solid nine. Um, Good man. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Darren. We'll serve you up more for your dinner. Yeah. The right place. We did have MJ here yesterday. Uh, Michael, I don't know where she is. I think she's on Instagram Live somewhere. So she'll have to wait. But the air fryer, ooh, the air fryer, they'll, they'll almost be ready. Right. And so if you are wondering about different spices, then. Listen, you can use any spice profile you, you like. I mean, you can make a bowl of potato like this. This would be really cool. Now that was hot. So there we go. There is our air fried potato. That is perfectly done as well. That is, I think that actually, that is, is as perfect as yeah. the one that we've just done with the pan. It's amazing, right? That's so gorgeous. good. So once more, let's give it a drizzle. Okay. We're, oh, all right, so uh, this will have to be the last one because you know what? Are we we are time? 30 minutes. So, oh, we're doing this. so we, we, we made our video yesterday, it was one hour. We vowed to make this one 30 minutes, and I think we've successfully done it. Yeah. So let's have a little uh, nibble on this one, and then. Oh my goodness me. That one is even better. Look, that's on, like dressed on, on the board. This is very um, rustic to rustic say the least. Vibes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Messy food style to start. The one in the oven is going to take another five or ten minutes, so we won't show you that one, but it will work. It just won't taste quite as naughty because it doesn't have the oil. Mm. But that is absolutely perfect. That looks amazing. Do you want to grab one? I will. I'll, I'll grab one of these. And do you know what, right? If you wanted to make that dip that we've just been dipping it in, just um, use use that same uh, spice or that same salt that we just used 
get some vegan mayonnaise, mix it together, and then there you are. It's going to be perfect. Absolutely. Boom. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. That is really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> really good. Mm -hmm. All right. Go. Wow. Do you start the Q&A? Yeah, man. My mouth is on fire. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of powder on that, my boy. Mm. Yeah, man. Q&A sounds good. Oh, so the first question okay. we've had is um, our favourite vegan bacon recipe. Um, I think I've got a good one in my mind. Okay, in our second cookbook, Bish Bash Bosch, we did a recipe for vegan BLT. Mm. And we used smoked tofu, covered it in corn flour, and then fried it with a bunch of spices like paprika, smoked salt, uh, soy sauce, red wine, and it just made a wonderful bacon. It was really good. Absolutely gorgeous. I guess I would go for the um, aubergine bacon, which was one of the first recipes we ever made in Boss about four years ago now. Yeah, that was a good one years. too. <clears throat> Cap, we are. Yeah. Any other questions? Ooh, so somebody has, this is a good question. Mm. Um, they're asking us which recipes we would recommend for isolation. Oh, wow. I would recommend nailing dal. Because uh, if you can nail dal, which if you don't know, is a kind of Indian lentil-based curry. Mm -hmm. If you can nail a dal, then you can buy these giant jars of lentils, red lentils, black lentils. They're tried. They will last for years on your shelves. And you can whip up a curry with whatever you've got in the fridge. You can chuck some sweet potato in there. You can chuck a load of spinach in there. It's just a wonderful recipe to master. Um, go over to Bosch.tv and you will find uh, a good couple of dals. There's one called Ian's Delightful Dal. It comes with a roti. And it's very good. A roti. A roti. Nicely said. In fact, you know, someone was talking about that roti was Sarah, uh, our publicist. And she cooked the dal and the roti on the weekend, and she said the roti has changed her life. It changed her life. Yeah. It will change your life too. And also another tip: um, we didn't um, soak these skewers, but we could have. Yeah. And that would have probably prevented a little bit of scorching as they were in the oven. Uh, but I don't think you would. I think you'd struggle to push them in. That's true. If they were soaked, so, so maybe you could really scratch point. that. Um, just you know what? This recipe is one to experiment with. Play around with it. It's silly. And just see how good you can get at carving that potato. It's so good. It's mm. so, so good. All right, we are um, way over our allotted time of half an hour. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Guys, it's been a pleasure. It really has. Thank you all for hanging out. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. We're going live tomorrow. Um, if you hit subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll get a little ding when we go live. So hopefully you won't miss us. And if you do make some of these, which we hope you do, let, uh, send us some photos on Insta at Bosch.tv. Big love to all of you. Stay safe wherever you are, and we'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Bye bye. This is that awkward moment when we've got to go and end. Now we have to go and stop it. Do a dance. Do a dance. I'm going to dance. This is like the almost off, but not quite off dance. Bye. Dance tree.